Thank you for joining us. We're so glad you're here. Day 15 of Locked In, being locked in. Many of our uh, restaurants have been closed for now for a while, except for a drive through And so that's what this series is focusing in on this week is just called drive through times when people in Scripture uh, drove in something or rode in something or uh, Jesus driving out demons. And today we're going to be in Acts chapter 8, uh, talking about a man who is riding a chariot. Now, it's very, very interesting because I, I don't know if you've had this experience, but let's just talk about it. Have you ever gotten into the car that wasn't yours or the wrong car? Maybe you've been to the store. Maybe you've been buying some groceries. You come out. You see a car that looks like yours. You load the groceries. You go to sit down. You realize, oh, this is this is not my car. Maybe you can get your groceries out fast enough before anybody notices. Or maybe, like one person this happened to, they loaded all their groceries, they go around, sit down, and they realize somebody's sitting in the passenger seat, they don't know who that is. They realize really quickly, wrong car. Uh, maybe you've had that experience, and, and I pray that if that's happened to you uh, on the receiving end, where someone's in your car that you don't know, uh, you weren't too badly shocked. Uh, but in Acts chapter 8, what we see is this, is that Jesus sends an angel to go tell Philip to speak to an Ethiopian. And it's very interesting. He says this in verse 26, an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, get up and go south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is the desert road. I don't know if you've uh, had this experience in your life where you feel like God challenges you to do something. Maybe he challenges you to read the word more. Maybe he challenges you to be engaged. Maybe he challenges you to a leadership position and points you to that. Uh, and you feel maybe like you're not equipped. Maybe you feel like it's literally like going through a desert uh, or on a desert road. And you don't know how God is going to use something that's happened to you in the past. Maybe it's happened to you recently. And you wonder, God, how are you using this? Even now, as we have been locked in, I hope that you've seen ways that God is using this for good. I hope you've been able to spend time with friends uh, at, a, at a distance, obviously. Maybe you've learned new technology. Maybe you've seen more people out in your neighborhood. Uh, maybe you've seen some people that show great compassion and care about you. I hope that's been the case, that you've seen good in all of this. But here's what happens here. It says, so he got up and went. Philip goes ahead and goes just as the Lord tells him. It says, there was an Ethiopian man, a eunuch and high official of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who was in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to worship in Jerusalem. Now, this is interesting because we get some details about this man. First of all, he's from Ethiopia, so he's an outsider coming into Jerusalem. It also says that he was a eunuch. So according to Old Testament scripture, this man would not have been able to go uh, into the temple. He would not have been able to go into uh, a really area of, of real worship, uh, but he was able to be a part of some festivities outside the temple. Uh, and then it says that he's also serving as a treasurer uh, for the queen of Ethiopia. Now, this is a high ranking official. But yet he's here riding in a chariot and he's reading scripture. It says that he's reading the prophet Isaiah. And then the spirit tells Philip, go and join that chariot. Man, it's just like the Lord, isn't it? To challenge us to go to people where we don't know, to speak to them about Jesus, to go to places that's uncomfortable, uh, people that are different than us, uh, people that have different backgrounds and stories and uh, all this kind of experience. And yet the Lord challenges us to go. And Philip obeys and he goes and it says, verse 30, it says, When Philip ran up to it, he heard him reading the prophet Isaiah and said, Do you understand what you're reading? How can I, he said, unless someone guides me. So he invited Philip to come up, come up and sit with him. And he reads this passage from Isaiah 53. It says, He was led like a sheep to the slaughter. And as a lamb is silent before a shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who will describe his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. The eunuch said to Philip, I ask you, who is the prophet saying this about? Himself or someone else? Who is this lamb that was led to be slaughtered? Who is this that takes away the sin? Who is this that, that stayed silent even like a lamb before the shearers are silent? Who is this that in his humiliation, justice is denied? And Philip proceeded to tell him the good news about Jesus, beginning with that scripture. Can I encourage you today? All of the Old Testament is about Jesus. All the New Testament is about Jesus and his return. And so I encourage you today that you would look for Jesus as you read the Bible, 
that you would spend time knowing him, that you would spend time seeing uh, his grace, his mercy, and knowing that the good news can be preached and spoken about even from the Old Testament to the New Testament, that all things point to him. It's in fact, and Jesus says that himself uh, in Luke 24, when he appears to the disciples on the road to Emmaus, he tells them, he says, haven't you read Moses, the prophets? He says, and all the books that are written about me. And so I just want to encourage you in this today is that first of all, we don't miss opportunities. Don't miss an opportunity this week to serve your friends, love your neighbors from a distance, of course, keeping that social distancing, to love them well, to serve them well, to serve your community with opportunities like our food pantry or uh, other opportunities in our community and, and resources that, that have been given and freely given. Uh, maybe a neighbor just needs to be checked on. Maybe someone needs groceries that you're close to. Maybe you can be uh, someone like Philip. Uh, you can be like Philip to someone else who has a need. And maybe the spirit of the Lord living in us would put someone on our mind and on our heart. And we would call them. We would check on them. And we would just see the goodness of God in orchestrating our lives with the relationships that he's placed with us. I love to see this because later they go on down the road and a eunuch sees the water and he says, hey, here's some water. What's stopping me from being baptized today? I would ask that same question to you. What's stopping you from following Jesus in obedience today? I would encourage you, look at your life, repent of your sin, hear the good news of Jesus that he was led like a sheep to the slaughter. He did stand before his accusers silently, just like a sheep before the shearers. And he took up our sin and our shame, and by his wounds, we are healed. Would you be encouraged in that today? Continue to serve, continue to love people, and continue to to have the perseverance that is needed during this time. We encourage you in this. You never know who God is going to send to us to encourage us, and you never know how he's going to send us to encourage others. But be encouraged today. We love you.